I just want to talk to you today about the Amtac KRS V2 key mod handguard. As you know from Final Channel, you know we built this precision rifle a few months back. We've been using it in a lot of different videos, more recently a lot of the ammo testing videos. And the one thing that's really stood out with me with this rail is the fact of how much is built into it. So you have the key mod, but you also have the two cutie mounts on either side. So you have four cutie mounts, one on, or two on each side. That's really cool. And just the build quality that goes into this. And it also has a you know interesting design as far as the top here with uh, the way it looks. And we'll get into that when we get a little bit closer up look at this. But I've been using it with a bipod on the front, as you can see here. I've been using uh, that. I'll go ahead and take this off. So let's talk about the rail first. You know, looking at this rail, it's definitely a streamlined design. Nothing crazy going on. There's a lot of designs out there. There's some that kind of cut in and out, and it's not a, a flat front. I'm not a huge fan of those designs. They really, you know, built a lot into this when they engineered it. Um, as you know, I do have a bipod on the front of this uh, build, and I do have this on here the way I put stuff on Keymod. I don't like Keymod as far as the way it was intended. And I, it's failed on me and I've seen it fail on some other people's stuff. So what I do is I take weld nuts, put them on the inside. It's more of a static mount than it is key mod, which is basically, you know, you can take things on and off quickly, but it's stable and I know what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get something that's not gonna move, you know, and uh, it works for me. When you look back here, um, so you have your, your key mod slots. You can mount some uh, other stuff on the top here if you're looking to do that. But the other cool thing is it has two CUNY mounts. Um, on the back here towards the magwell, and on the front here towards the uh, barrel. Um, so you can go ahead and you know use your key mod. It has it on both sides, so you have two on both sides. Um, so that's pretty cool. You get the pick rail up top, more key mod on the bottom. So you have whatever, you know, as far as a rail goes, you have a basic rail, uh, nice and lightweight, and um, you know, as far as the rail goes, you're looking at 7.8 ounces. So it's a nice lightweight rail. You're not gonna find too many that are below that weight for the rail alone. So it's definitely competing with a lot of the ones uh, on the market. And um, let's look at the uh, barrel nut now. So as far as this barrel nut goes, this is actually a steel barrel nut. And the way that they have this on here, you can see that um, it's nice and it's a little elongated which is great for a precision design because what you're gonna get out of that is a little more stability because you have a little bit more length on that uh, barrel nut. Um, you know, the barrel nut went on fine, no problems there. You uh, have different ways you can go about, you know, putting that on there. The one thing that I would like to see changed is the screws. What they come with is a 632nd screw. I actually stripped one of these and had a hell of a time getting it out. A lot of other mounts on the market and what I have, for example, here is the Parallax Tactical, which I did review. Um, they use an 832nd uh, screw. And what you'll see is, this is the screw that comes with the Amtac, and this is the screw that comes with the Parallax Tactical. I'm trying to get this picture here. Okay. <laughs> that did not work. <laughs> so let's take a look here, a little close-up close look. You know, here is the Amtac and here is the uh, Parallax Tactical. And, you know, the thing I like to see is Amtac move up to an 832nd screw. This is an 832nd screw right here. All the key mod accessories are an 832nd. So I'm unsure why there's a 632nd screw used uh, for holding on the rail. Um, I'm sure there's a reason behind it. But the one thing I like to see is moving up to an 832nd screw. Um, I don't think it would be that large of a change, and I think it would definitely add to the robustness uh, that is, you know, this rail. I think moving up to an 832nd screw is definitely going to increase, you know, the durability of the rail. Now, granted, I haven't had any problems with it, just a problem with, you know, with it being such a small screw, I did strip it out. As you can see here, I do have one missing because I stripped it out. What I actually had to do was take my Dremel and cut in to uh, the screw and kind of have a um, uh, flathead um, cut into it so I could get it out with a flathead. Um, you know, it wasn't a huge deal, but you know, after looking over some of the other ones that are on the market, you know, I said to myself, you know, that's one thing I definitely would like to see. You know, I try to find the highs and lows of things. Have I had a problem with it? No, but it's definitely one thing I think they could, uh, you know, change in the future just to improve it even more.
you know, being made of 6061 T6 aluminum, this is definitely, you know, along the lines of what the other rails in the market are today that are, you know, popular. You're not going to see much that's made, you know, above 6061 because, you know, just based on what a rail does, this is a free float rail. You don't need to have something that's extremely heavy on the front of the rifle there. So, you know, using 6061 T6, you know, aluminum is a great option in my opinion. It's lightweight. It's really worked well for what I've looked to do with it. So let's go over the actual specs of the whole thing. So as far as the um, length of this, you're looking at a 15 inch rail. I didn't say that before. This is an 18 inch barrel, 15 inch rail. The uh, outer diameter is 1.7 inches and the inner diameter is 1.55 inches. The overall weight is 12 ounces. So you're looking at an extremely lightweight um, you know, rail. Of course, you can get some lighter weight ones out there, but Amtac is really, you know, for the price point, which is around $200. You know, this is a made in the USA rail, and for the price point, I think it's reasonable for what you're getting. You're getting a great barrel nut, which is extended, and, um, you know, for me, it's really worked out well. I've been able to shoot extremely well with it as far as, you know, precision and accuracy goes. Haven't seen any problems there. It's held on tight. I haven't had any problems with the screws, even though I would like to see them upgraded to, you know, 830 seconds. So overall, the performance of this has been what I expected and the reason that I got it in the first place. So, you know, I can definitely recommend this to you guys if you're looking for a great rail, you know, to maybe go on your precision rifle or just your rifle in general. You know, it has a great, you know, uh, diameter to it. It's not overly large. It's not super, you know, tiny. My parallax tactical is um, you know smaller than this and it can't accept suppressors so you know this is definitely a great rail if you're looking to uh, you know upgrade to something you know uh, newer you know I've had no problems with this rail whatsoever installed it easily you know it's performed I've taken it on and off many times and um, you know threw some Loctite on the um, you know the screws here put it on and I've had no problems and you've seen it in many videos I've had many other people use this rifle and they definitely have complimented me on um, the choice for this rail you know, based upon how it fits into the hand, how it feels, how ergonomic it is, and um, you know, how it performs. When you're buying stuff, you wanna make sure that you know, it works properly. You wanna make sure that the cuts are perfect. And putting key mod accessories on here, they work perfectly fine if you use it in the key mod um, you know, way. And as far as the QD mounts go, they work perfectly fine as well. You wanna make sure that they have the, the right cuts into them so they work properly. Um, if you had a cheaper you know, manufacturer, you probably have a problem over time with that wearing down. But uh, I've had no problems with my, um, you know, slings I've used with this. You can see that I usually run my sling on the front. You can see there's definitely more wear there. And um, that's how I run it. So overall, I've been really impressed with this. If you guys are looking for a new rail for your, your rifle, I definitely think this should definitely be on the list to take a look at. So if you guys have any questions or anything, go ahead and let me know. If you guys have some Amtac Precision stuff, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. Or better yet, make a video about it. And until next time, later. Uh. So let's talk about the rail itself before we talk about the barrel.